In this video, I'll be showing you how to set up the cold card queue. First, I'll unbox this device, show you what it comes with and what to look out for. Then I'll walk you through the entire setup from setting your pin to creating your first seed phrase. In future videos, I'll show you how to actually use the cold card with a wallet like Sparrow Wallet. This video is simply the initial setup of this device. If you want a structured deep dive into Bitcoin security, I teach everything you need to know about wallets and how to secure them at the bitcoincourse.com. I will leave a link below and let's continue setting up our cold card. The cold card queue comes in this cardboard box, so I'll just get this open. And here is everything we get. The cold card queue itself, which is in a tamper evident bag. We get some stickers and we get a wallet backup card. The cold card will come in a tamper evident bag that has a unique number on the bag. Now, one thing you need to look out for is any signs of tampering or opening on this bag. If it has been opened, this is a sign that your device might be compromised and you should email cold card about that. Everything looks good on my cold card. I don't see any signs of tampering or opening. So I'll go ahead and open this tamper evident bag. All right, I cut that open and now I'll simply pull the cold card out just like that. And here we have the cold card queue. And we also have this inside of the packaging that should match the number we saw on the outside bag. So where is that number again? Here it is, 109167705843. So that matches what I see here, which is a good sign. Now we will also have to double check that this number matches what we see on our cold card when we boot this thing up. So what we need to do now is power this cold card. And we can either do that with three AAA batteries that we slide in the back of the device, or we can power this with a USB-C cable at the bottom of our device over here. So I prefer to use three AAA batteries, so I'll put those in here. If you want to use a USB-C cable, that is okay. Just make sure that you're plugging that into a power bank or something that doesn't connect to the internet. You wouldn't want to plug this into your computer because then this isn't fully air-gapped. So I'll take this cover off and we'll go ahead and put three batteries in the back and we will seal this now. Cool, so now we have a power supply connected to the cold card and we need to power this thing on. And you can do that with the power button to the top left of our keyboard here. So I'll hold that down and now it will boot our cold card up. And there we go, it is starting to boot. Now, the first thing we are greeted with is terms of service. So it says, by using this product, you're accepting our terms of sale and use. Read the full document at coldcard.com forward slash legal. So if you'd like to read that, you can go to that link on your computer. I'm going to just accept that by pressing the enter button. So I will click on enter to the top right, just like that. And now it says your new cold card should have arrived sealed in a bag with the above number. Please take a moment to confirm the number and look for signs of tampering. So as I mentioned a moment ago, the tamper evident bag will have a number. So mine is 109.16770.05843. And to the top left of my cold card, I see the exact same number that matches. So this step is okay. And it says, if anything looks off, take pictures and contact support at coinkite.com. So everything looked good to me. I had no signs of tampering on my bag and the number that I see here matches my tamper evident bag. So I will click on enter to proceed. And now we are greeted with this screen. Either we can choose a pin code, advanced tools, or our bag number. So we want to choose a pin code on this screen. So in yellow, I have choose pin code. So I'll simply click on enter to proceed with that. And now I can choose a pin. It says, pick the main wallet's pin code now. Be more clever, but an example is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It has two parts, the prefix and the suffix. And then it says each part and I can't read the rest of the text. So what you'll need to do is scroll down. So I'll click on this button to scroll down. So it says each part, then I'll scroll, must be between two and six digits long. Total length can be as long as 12 digits. The prefix part determines the anti-phishing words you will see each time you log in. Your new pin protects access to this cold card device 
and is not a factor in the wallet's seed words or private key. There's absolutely no way to recover a forgotten pin. Write it down. So what we need to do now is select a pin that has two parts, a prefix and a suffix. And the pin can be up to 12 characters. So I've got a piece of paper here where I'll be writing down my pin, but you could also write it down on your wallet backup card where it says device pin here, as well as your anti-phishing words, which we will get to in a second. So I'm going to randomly generate a pin, write that down, and we're going to insert that into the cold card. This is the pin I've selected. My prefix is 4829 and my suffix 1662. So I'll put that to the side. And now on the cold card, I will click on the check mark, well, the enter button rather, to proceed to the next screen. And it says warning, there's absolutely no way to reset the pin or factually reset the cold card if you forget the pin. Do not forget the pin code. Press six to prove you have read to the end of this message. So I have read the whole message. I'll simply click on six to prove that and continue. Now I can enter the first part of my pin and then the second part once I've done the first part. So I will type in four, eight, two, and nine, and click on enter. Now it says enter the second part of your pin. Mine is one, six, six, two. So I will type in one, six, six, and two. Two. Now, before I click on enter, it actually says my two anti-phishing words here, balance and awkward. Now, I'm not sure if it's going to show that again, so I'll quickly write that down on my paper with my pen. So there I have the words balance and awkward written down, and on my cold card, now that I've entered the second part of my pen, I will click on enter. Now I need to confirm the pen once again. So my prefix was 4829, I will enter four eight, two, nine, and click on enter. And my suffix was one, six, six, two. So I'll go on one, six, six, and two. Now I can confirm the pin value by clicking enter. Now it says you have two different pin codes and they don't match, so I must have made a mistake there. It says press two to try the second one again. So I'm going to click on two and just uh, try that again. Maybe I made a mistake. So it's 4829, 4829. I click on enter and then it was 1662. So I'll go 1662. And let's click on enter. And there we go, we have saving and my pin has been created. So the cold card did not show me my anti-phishing words again, but I did write them down. These phishing words are generated by your pin prefix and they are unique to your cold card. If you ever fill your prefix in and you see different words, you can assume that this is a different cold card. Your cold card will always produce these phishing words when you enter that pin. So this is a feature cold card has built so that nobody can swap out a fake cold card for your real cold card. Because if you were to enter the prefix, you would know it's a fake cold card because the phishing words are wrong. So every time you fill in your prefix, you should see these two words. Now that we have set a pin, we have our anti-phishing words. Our cold card is now operational and ready to start creating Bitcoin wallets. And what we need to do is create a new wallet by clicking new seed words. So I'm already on new seed words. It's highlighted in yellow. I will click on enter. Now we have three options, 12 words, 24 words or advanced. So you can either have 12 or 24 words, or if you click on advanced, you can actually roll dice to generate again, 12 or 24 words. This is a more advanced feature and I will cover that in a different video. So for this video, I'll click on cancel and go back to this screen and I will go ahead and select 12 words. Now for me personally, I tend to prefer 24 words. So if this is securing your Bitcoin stack, I would choose 24. But just for this video sake, I'll do 12 words and click on enter. And now it's generating my seed phrase using the random number generator built into the cold card 
And there we go, it's displaying my 12 words now. It says record these 12 secret words. Please check and double check. I'm going to scroll down. Please check and double check your notes. There will be a test. And then it says press forward to add some dice into the mix or press QR to view as QR code. We're not going to do any of that. So I'll scroll back up and I'm going to write down my 12 word seed phrase on a piece of paper. I now have my 12 words written down on this piece of paper. And now just a reminder, these words are the backup of all the Bitcoin that you're going to store in this cold card. You must keep these words safe. They are the access to your Bitcoin. If you ever lose the cold card queue or it's broken or anything happens to it in general, you need these words to get your Bitcoin back. Keep them safe and maybe put them in something more durable like metal. I cover Bitcoin seed phrases and the fundamentals of Bitcoin wallets very extensively in the bitcoincourse.com. So if you're interested about learning more about how wallets work or how to secure Bitcoin to the best of your ability, go to the bitcoincourse.com. Now that I have my seed phrase written down, I'm going to proceed on my cold card by clicking enter. And it's going to test me on my 12 word seed phrase. So it's asking me what word six is. So I'll look on my paper here and word six is a letter. So it's giving me three options, inside, stadium or letter. What I need to do is click on option three. And now word 11. Word 11 for me is session. So I will click on option two, session, just like that. And I'll do that until I have all 12 words completed. Word five for me is letter, so I will click on letter. And that was my last word, and now it's applying the seed phrase onto my cold card. And there we go, that is all done. And it says, welcome. Your cold card has been configured for best security practices. USB is disabled, NFC is disabled, and virtual disk is disabled. So that is all good with me. You can scroll down and it says you can change these settings later in hardware on or off. So that's fine by me. I will click on enter. And now we are in the cold card main screen. This is now a functional wallet. It contains a seed phrase and it can now export wallets onto Sparrow or whichever wallet you're using on desktop or your phone. And that is how to do the initial setup of your cold card queue. And I will see you in the next video.